<laughs> well, so let's all begin with this. First of all, welcome to the first WB campus, everyone. Um, this seems exciting. We just hired it, and I'm sure it's all everyone excited about this and getting more information, right? Um, so yeah, um, the first session is web publishing with WordPress across the curriculum, and we have Todd here, who is actually an assistant professor at Middle Tennessee State University. Um, Todd has been a full-time tenured track assistant professor and is the coordinator for the new media communication concentration in the College of Media and Entertainment at MTSU. Um, he has taught at the college level since 1989 and he likes, to, likes long walks on the beach but also bicycling when working at beach, beach washing. <laughs> so, that's fun. Fun. Hi, thanks Neil, thanks. Um, yeah, as Neil said, I am a tenure track professor at uh, Middle Tennessee State. I'm the second oldest tenure track professor at Middle Tennessee State, I'm pretty sure. My birthday was yesterday. I was 58, I cannot friggin' believe it. <laughs> so, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Um, now I have to figure out what I have to touch to make things happen. All right, we're gonna do the space bar. So this is what we're doing. Um, I'd like to find out who's kind of who in here. So who is um, an instructor? Who's faculty, academic type people? Who are staff? Anybody do both? If you do both. Okay, um, who's using WordPress in their classroom right now, either for course sites or for student sites? Only a few, oh good. Good. All right, so this might be an education. Let's go see. All right, so I'm uh, sort of winging it right now because I have my presenter notes. So I'm going to see if I can remember what I said. <laughs> All right, um, so here's my journey. Um, I started, um, uh, wow. Um, so I was 30 years in industry. When I, uh, while I was teaching, um, I was also working in uh, Fortune 200. Um, financial services e-commerce and I realized hey I'm a web guy I've been doing the web since like 94 and I should deliver all my material you know via a website because that just made sense to me um, it didn't make sense to you know make all these copies and uh, you know kill trees so that's what I did and this is how I started mm -hmm. this is actually yep. one of the pages from one of my sites from, uh, this is 2000, it's the early part of the century, let's just say that, <laughs> and that freaks me out. <laughs> All right. um, this is, again, same, <laughs> same uh, uh, class, uh, early part of the century, uh, ignore those dates modified, that's just when I copied it over, but this is my course, right? Um, you can see it's really simple, kept it really simple, and I'll talk about that in a second. So, um, here's why I did all this. One is I figured I have to use the web. So, I'm going to use the web to deliver all the stuff about my courses. I'm going to keep it as simple as I can for me, so I can manage it, right? And I'm going to keep it simple for the students to navigate it. Because the point is them, not me. You know, the course site is for them. <laughs> it's just, you know, happens that I'm also a kind of user. Um, I'm going to make it accessible to them. Again, navigation, but, you know, we all have different kinds of students in our classes. We have uh, people who really like to read. We have people who like really pretty pictures. Um, we have people who like video. Um, you know, we have to make it work for them all the way across. Now, understand what you saw with that coding, not web accessible coding, just not. Um, so, did it deliver a great SEO? No. Was it great for uh, screen readers? I really don't know. <laughs> um, but we'll talk about that in a second. The last part here, and this is for me the biggest one, I wanted to model behavior. I wanted my students to see that you can do this, that you can publish material to the internet, to the web, and other people can see it. Right? So they know that I can do it. And they know that they can do it. And that's why another reason I kept it simple was to show them that, yeah, I can actually make this happen. All right, this is what it's a uh, place for, all this stuff that we have to do. Um, syllabi, schedules, all the normal stuff we have. Um, that, this is almost the content strategy for all my sites. Um, and we'll let that build. So these are, this is the actual content strategy I use for every site, the organization I use for every site. Um, again, that's for me to keep it simple. The 
The other part is I'm a coordinator for concentration in new media. So I have students who come from, they come from like an overview survey class. They go all the way through our program up to capstone. And what I want them to do is to learn what the sites are, sites are like once so that they can just carry through and they don't have to go, well, where's the assignments? Well, the assignments are under assignments. That's where they always will be. Just keep looking for that. Right. So basically training them to, uh, to navigate through by themselves. Uh, example, course homepage. I still do a course homepage. I don't put uh, the blog up front. I do use the blog. It's right there. I call it updates. Uh, it's accessible for all the students. This is where they can find the latest and the greatest. Um, go down through here. Syllabi, right, standard. We'll talk about what I do here to uh, make that easier for me. Uh, schedule, I break my schedule out of my syllabi because I want students to be able to see uh, what's going on, uh, you know, week to week, whatever. They, um, I can tell them we have an assignment. It's due in this day. They can look under the, the due column and see that that's when, it's, when it has to be delivered. Um, this is, you know, as you know, for you, those, for you who teach, this is sometimes a foreign concept. You know, when is it, what does it do? Um, what's the reading they need to do? Yeah, it's right there. It's under reading. <laughs> and just know that for this date, that reading has been assigned, and we're going to discuss it. You can't see it, but down here, um, we're going to discuss it in the next class. This is when you need to do this. So, um, pretty much I'm laying it all out. It's their assignment book, if you want to. Um, they go here, they find out what's going on. Do does everybody use it? No, because they're students. Um, I should tell you about our students. Um, <laughs> uh, I should tell you about our students. So uh, Middle Tennessee State is the uh, largest public university in the state of Tennessee. We have, depending on who you talk to, if you talk to the actual people who know, about 23,500 students on one campus. If you talk to the president, we have over 26,000 students. Um, just really depends on who he's talking to. Um, our students are predominantly uh, first generation college attendees. Uh, we come from every social strata you could think of in Tennessee and elsewhere. So we have students who come into school from uh, inner city Memphis schools. Uh, we have students who come in from the most wealthy areas of Nashville, Davidson County Metro. So everywhere, if you know Tennessee, Brentwood is sort of like the Beverly Hills of Nashville, right? Um, so big, broad range. Now, they may all come in with 2.5, 3.0 GPAs, but they come from different schools. So, uh, you know, pretty broad range. All right, let's uh, move along. This is an example of an assignment. Uh, assignments, same thing. All follow the same format. They have an objective, a description. I can't show you the rest here. Um, they have a section called deliverables. They have due dates. It's all there. So when a student says, what are we supposed to do? I say, well, look under the assignments. Here's the assignments, the how-to or explainer project, and look on down through it. My deliverables are set up like little bullets. You know, I'm giving you educational stuff now, I guess. My deliverables are set up like little bullets. I tell them if you can check off every little bullet, you are in, you know, on target for like a high B or an A. It's just that simple. Just do the work. Do people get high Bs and As? No, they don't. Because they're <laughs> students. <laughs> um, yes, they do come out. Uh, all our students come out from the No Child Left Behind philosophy of education. Um, my students come to me and ask for rubrics. I want a rubric for this. I'm like, well, okay, it's in the assignment. No, I actually want like a grid. Give me a grid with everything in the scores and the whole deal. I'm like, hmm, none. All right, this is my resources section. It's different from updates. Here's resources. It's actually a two drop down. Here's a little how to, and these are all my little how to's. Um, this is a mix here of, I'm trying to think how I have this set up now. Um, I think this is a category. Yeah, I think that's a category. And then these are items that are categorized under that way. And then these are actual, um, these are a mix of either pages, because I want it there forever, or they're a mix of a post 
that I found someplace that I thought, well, that's really good. It's a nice how-to. I'm going to stick it there, and it's going to stay there forever. Right? And it's all built using standard WordPress menus. Right? Nothing, you know, no brain surgery here. This is me. Um, my page with all my, whoa, whoa, that's why. <laughs> Let's see what I missed. <laughs> Hold on, folks. Wow, what did we miss? Okay, not much. Good. <laughs> all right, that's me. I'm just not hitting that thing. Um, yeah, I do give them my cell phone number. Um, they never use it. <laughs> like, why do we worry about that? Um, here's all my social media stuff. There's much more down below. Me, so they can recognize that's actually who's supposed to be in the room at the time. And then up here is I put my teaching philosophy. Do they read it? No. Um, but it's there, and uh, it would be interesting for them to read it so they understand who I am. Again, uh, this is all pretty standard stuff, right? No brain surgery going on. All right, why is this good? Because we have a, a great place to put in you know, all that evergreen content, the syllabi. I don't, you know, from semester to semester, I use WordPress to basically version my, my syllabi or my schedule or my whatever. Um, and then I just do my updates as I happen to. So if there's a new policy that comes out, we had a new disability policy that came out. That was easy. I just drop it in. Um, uh, we had a new, uh, I think it was a scholarship or maybe a plagiarism policy that came out. I just drop them in, and if I need to go back, I can just you know grab uh, the um, last version and you know grab that and bring that back in. The students always have the most current course content. Right? Even if they miss class, they can go to the website and they have the most current course content. Whatever's happening, they know what the schedule is, they know what the assignments are. All my assignments are posted at the beginning of the semester. I don't do like the hide thing. Like, okay, here's the assignment. Yes, there's three more assignments, but I'm not going to show them to you. No, I actually show everything to them. I want them to see everything. I want them to see the volume of work they're going to have to go through. Um, they've got the most current information. That's what I use updates for. The most current information about the subject matter. This is what I call taking the course content, um, basically taking it out into the community, if you will, or maybe bringing the community into the course. I want them to know that everything changes. In my field, um, our college has a number of different programs. Our biggest one, half the college is a recording industry. We're <clears throat> south of Nashville, so uh, we teach people how to be audio engineers and music business, publicists, that kind of thing. That's about 1,000 students in our college. Um, another 400 are video and film people. Um, I have in my concentration about 60 people. Um, uh, so my concentration is new media communication. And when I, you know, people say, well, what's new media communication? I say, well, whatever happens today, I need to teach that tomorrow. That needs to be in my curriculum tomorrow. <laughs> Because my students are going to ask me questions. <laughs> you know, talk about like cognitive overload, right? I told you I'm 58. Right? So my head is exploding with all sorts of crapola over, you know, 30 years of stuff. And um, so that's really hard. Although I haven't tried to see if there's any good Pokemon Go here on campus yet. All right. Um, there is. <laughs> there is. <laughs> I only know because I'm from here, so. All right, okay, all right. Um, are there any gyms on campus? Because huh? Are there any Pokemon gyms on campus? It's actually the Powell Crossing Estate. It's a what? It's the Powell Crossing Estate. It's uh, basically the okay. the mansion that's like right down the street. So. Cool, I haven't been in the gym yet. After, <laughs> after <laughs> party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, and the last one is students cannot lose the syllabus. I don't know where it is. I lost it. I still have students who go, can, I print, can you print it out for me? Can I get a printed version? I'm like, no. It's not. No, it's online. Now, here's the hard part. Um, maybe the hard part. So we are not a technologically progressive campus. Um, maybe some of you go or work at those kinds of schools. Um, so uh, we have a big paper file of all syllabi for all classes going back like, I don't know, six or seven years. So I have to print out my syllabus every semester. So I go to the page and I print it out and it looks like what it looks like. It doesn't look like anybody else's syllabus because it has 
that WordPress header across the top. I mean, it just looks different. Um, it could be colorful if I had a, a printer. Um, but yeah, I have students who uh, ask for the syllabus and I just tell them it's online. Go to the class website. I keep my URL really simple. Just go there. It's there. You can read it. If you want to print it, you should do that. All right, here's things I do. Um, on my class, uh, I think that's done. All right, on my sites, uh, my course sites, I list student sites. So um, depending on the size of the course, that depends on where I put the list of students. For a small course, um, small course for me is like 16 students, 20 students. I'll list them actually right up on the front page of the site. It says student sites. And anybody can go to any of those student sites. Anybody anywhere in the world can go to any of those student sites and read what those students are doing. Um, for a large class, I just had a large lecture class last semester. We had, it could have had over 70, it only had, uh, that's not large, I guess. Uh, I think I had uh, 53 students. I created a separate page for them, uh, just because there's so many. I threw it into a table and we could go through. Why do I do that? Because I use those student sites as examples in class. So uh, one of the assignments we do is, uh, Wow, I must have skipped by that. Oh, you'll see it in the student part. Um, we'll talk about that. But I use those student sites to reference in class all the time. Um, I social media publish, and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, and then I interconnect the class websites because I'm in a concentration. And the idea is they move up through the concentration. They use all the skills. We've tried to you know, kind of format it or sequence it so that uh, they're building on their skills all the way through up to capstone. So um, if uh, it's a writing class, there may be a, a sidebar item that has all the latest posts from the video class. If it's a video class, it may have all the latest posts from a user experience class. Because the idea is they kind of really need to know all of these things. And maybe they're going to be interested in that. Maybe they took it already and they go, oh, that's interesting. I want to read that. Maybe they haven't taken it and go, hmm, I wonder what that is. They can click through it. I'm just trying to give them opportunities for uh, to explore their curiosity, I guess. I post, as I said, once a week. So when I find things, I post it. Um, I post it to a concentration-specific, um, well, it varies. <laughs> um, I typically post something to the site. I have a Feedly. Uh, is anybody using Feedly? Yes, Feedly. An RSS reader. I have a RSS reader with over 200 different sources. They're all divided up into categories. I have one for video, one for writing. And when I find something interesting, up it goes. If you want to take a look at one of my writing sites, you'll find lots of stuff on grammar and English mechanics. Uh, and then I use what I refer to as template pages. Now, you, if you're technically adept at WordPress, these are not um, post types or content types. Not. Um, and for two, well, one really simple reason. One, uh, coming out of, uh, you know, enterprise web content management, content type is one thing. But in WordPress, I haven't figured it out yet. Because it's not what I understand to be a content type. So I don't do that. Um, what I do instead is I use template pages. Uh, so when a new site's going to come up, uh, you know, we have to start a new site. I have a little file, an export of the WordPress site, where I've stripped out all the content. And I just import that into the new site, and off it goes. And I'll talk about things that we're going to do in the future to make that simpler. All right, so here's my list of student sites. Uh, two different kinds, as you can see. Make sure I don't flip. Right, that's a very small class, the content management class, special topics. And then this is my big uh, um, uh, survey class. This actually goes all the way down to about <laughs> there. It's pretty long. All right, um, here's where I'm connecting my courses through social media. These, all these posts, go out to this account, MTSU New Media. Um, this Twitter stream is on every single class website. A uh, couple reasons. One, because there's things that are related, right? Kind of cool. Here's a 15-minute social media audit everyone can do. Should be interesting to all of my students. This is Pizza Night. This is our uh, student meeting. All our students come together, right? So I'm doing two things, educating, informing on every single site. Again, I'm, 
I'm creating sort of like this network of sites for my concentration. And hopefully, they're um, actually using that. Yes, this is the thing. Um, so this, this is like my once-ish a week. And don't look at the dates. I think I've blurred them enough. So you can't see them. Um, so uh, this, these are just things. This is actually coming out of my content management course. I created a, uh, a post called my WordPress plugins. These, this is just a few, but there's whatever, 20 some on. These are coming off my WordPress favorites. Uh, working on a client site, because that's one of the things they have to do. They had to do a, a project. Here's a Gartner's Magic Quadrant, Quadrant for WCM, Web Content Management. And just so you know, automatic, not WordPress, automatic is right about there, which is uh, leading and innovative. I think that's how it goes. So they're not up in the top corner. Remarkably, you can see Adobe. Is anybody using Adobe, like Adobe Muse? They're like up, they're like up there. Adobe and Sitecore are number one. I'm like, okay, didn't know that. Um, here's one of my page templates. Um, I don't even know what course this is from. Oh, this is a new course I'm teaching that I haven't filled in yet. Um, I'm teaching this in uh, the fall. So I just fill in the blanks here as it goes down through. This is all blank until I get down to the bottom where there's all the boilerplate stuff. The stuff around uh, disabilities, around uh, scholars, uh, scholarships, um, plagiarism, uh, that sort of stuff down the bottom. Really simple. Again, not a content type. I've just templated the information on the page. All right, stuff that I have done. Now, this is one where I don't have my notes, so I'm going to have to remember everything that I put on this slide. Um, stuff I have done. I've tried to do quizzes. <coughs> Um, using uh, mTouch quiz. Uh, cool little tool. I didn't buy the premium version, um, but I found it was much easier really just to use our learning management systems quiz function. We use uh, Desire to Learn. It was much easier just to use that to run the quizzes because then all the grades just dump into the grade book and I don't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, let's see, what, what else have I done? Uh, I've had students go. Don't judge me. I've had students as authors on my class websites. Now, stupidly, I did this my first semester on my survey class with over 50 students as authors on my class website. That was a mess. But my thought was, OK, they're learning things. They're going to go out and find current topics. You'll see I talk about that in a second. Let's put that on the class website so there's one place where everybody can go and see that. Um, you know, uh, your mileage will, will vary, our students' mileage varies between, yeah, I totally get this, to I actually had one student in one of my writing classes who just gave me a blank stare the entire class because he didn't understand anything I was saying. Um, and uh, it was difficult. So you get those people, right? Or you get the technophobes, um, like the uh, non traditional adult learners who believe that everything they do on the computer, they will break it. <laughs> All right, things I haven't done. I haven't done, and these are just simple things. I haven't done polls. I've been thinking about it. I just haven't done them. Um, you know, I thought it might be interesting just to do like little one question polls to see what's going on. I don't do uh, Twitter polls. I don't use clickers in my class, um, if you're familiar with those, to you know, basically get stuff going on. Um, uh, what else? Um, I haven't flipped any of my classrooms. Anybody familiar with flipped classroom? So I haven't flipped any of my classrooms, so I don't really have any video on there that I produce. If I find video that's interesting, I'll you know, uh, embed it. But I don't have any of that uh, on the site. OK, let's boogie. Here we go. In progress, uh, I'm doing course website workshops in my college, because I want everybody to have this. Um, I have a WordPress network install. Uh, it's hosted over at Bluehost right now. Um, I'm going to see if I can get that moved uh, to somewhere else. Um, we are a Microsoft campus, very similar to this. Um, so um, they are, our IT has told our college, we will not give you a WordPress server because people could get into it and get into our system and take us down. And so WordPress is like persona non grata or programma non grata. Um, I have three instructors right now, me, 
and two other instructors. My other new media colleague, and I have uh, one of the video and film instructors. I have another video and film instructor who we're pretty sure she's going to accept our offer. And uh, if she does, um, she will just jump on this. I know that. So I'll have four, and I'm hoping to get everybody. Um, we have instructors who have no personal website. We have instructors who have no LinkedIn profile. We have instructors who do not use Twitter. Stay away from it. It is the devil. Um, they do not, I don't know, I don't care about this. They don't friend students on any Facebook account, whether it's their personal Facebook account or a professional Facebook account. It's like, no, 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 it's all about me, not about them. I don't want them to see what I'm doing. Like, well, I guess you need to be a human too. In the works, um, one of the things I want to do, I showed you that template page. I'm, I'm playing around and I haven't made it happen. You know when you do um, an install of WordPress, it gives you... Uh, the two posts, right? Um, Hello world gives you a post, and it gives you the about page, right? Well, that's a little function in the in the config for a network install. So you can actually go through there and actually say install these pages and put this content on those pages. So um, that's what I'm working on because when people create a new site in my network install, I just want the site to be there, and then with everything, and I want them to start just filling the blanks in. Um, again, I'm promoting news by all faculty, and I'm working on getting free hosting. Uh, through our college, we just implemented a technology uh, fee, and I'm trying to get uh, free hosting for all of the faculty and all course websites. Uh, it's through Reclaim Hosting. They block. Web Publishing for Learning. Here's the student stuff. Okay, so I broke it down in these little six, you know, kind of typical things. We're going to pop through here. Who? Millennials. We all have them in our classes. We all love them, right? Um, but they're on their way out. They're leaving us. We only have a few years left with our millennials, and then they're gone. Uh, just a quick stat, 92% um, of all millennials are online constantly all day. I forget where they, I think it comes from Pew. Um, but these people are more interesting. These are the people that we're getting. Um, they're coming through uh, <coughs> Common Core now, so don't even ask them ask to see their math problems. You will not understand them. Um, Gen Z is coming, and these are different people. Uh, the two commonalities between the two is that both of these groups, and these people love, Gen Z people <coughs> love, love, love um, creating content for other people. <laughs> they love, love, love commenting on stuff. They love, love, love learning new things on the internet. Isn't this great? It's like, like they're like, you know, uh, in the palm of my hand here. Both things in common for both of these, uh, both of these audiences, they don't personally publish. They don't publish for themselves, right? All their publishing happens on Facebook. Right? Well, that's just a moneymaker. That's not for them. That's, you know, if we all stopped, if the whole world stopped publishing on Facebook, there would be no Facebook. Right. And that's just how that works. All right, what? What do we do? Here's the stuff I have them do. Progress reports. Is anybody into experiential learning? Yes? Necessary for reflection within experiential learning. So progress reports. What are you doing? This is one of my seniors uh, from Capstone. She's building, she built a, uh, you'll see more of it, I think, uh, a site called casualpilgrim.com. Uh, with uh, late teens to 24, you can see she's talking about uh, what she's doing with her uh, audience changing. Current event posts. All students have to create current event posts. These are events around whatever the curriculum is. So video people go find stuff about curriculum. Um, you know, that's uh, uh, about, you know, about video. Uh, these students are my new media uh, survey students. So I had what I call the cool thing of the week post. They had to go out and find the coolest thing they could find. What was interesting? And here's one, music controlled by a heartbeat. Um, this is, I'm sort of cheating here, this is one of my graduates, um, but this is an example of uh, uh, an assignment post that would be in the video course. This would be on his site. This is a video he created for our uh, digital wall of fame. Um, this is, a, this guy's amazing. <laughs> if I could have like, like 60 more of him, I would be thrilled. Uh, when did they do this? We start publishing when they're a freshman. Right away. Do they know WordPress? No. 
Are they afraid of WordPress? Yes. Uh, sophomores, a little more advanced here, right? Um, this student's actually in my survey class, but she was also in my writing class. Um, so she's a little different. I had to put it this way because this is a, um, a horizontal sc scrolling site. So you can see here's the cat, there's the cat. It like scrolls that away. Not thrilled with it, but you know, it's a WordPress theme. Um, uh, does anybody love the 1980s WordPress theme? Because I hate it. Uh, just look for it on uh, yourlocalwordpress.com. Uh, a junior, getting more elaborate, right? She's adding uh, more stuff in here. Um, live Twitter coverage, website. This is stuff that she's working on. This is one of my seniors. This is actually that same senior you just saw a little earlier, uh, Jordan Jackson. Uh, this is her site. Um, it's got information here, some design stuff. This is their categories. Here's her projects. This is Kyra. She's a graduate uh, right now. This is actually half of her site. She has another, which is like a, a motivational, Christian motivational website. But this is her personal website. All right, students are as publishers. It's a required course element in every single class. Every course, it's required. Um, and it's implemented across our entire curriculum, as I, I think I said earlier. Why do we do it? For this, teachable moments. They need to know this because in high school, they're told there's no such thing as fair use. You can't use anything. <coughs> Forget that. Ah, just gonna run away. Um, so uh, we teach them this. I teach them this. Free expression. Yes, this is your platform, right? It's the only platform on earth that is available to you for little to no money to say whatever you want to to everybody on earth who has an internet connection. Is that that's like I stand there? It's like amazing to me. Writing mechanics. My students are terrible. They're not so much terrible writers. They have good ideas. They cannot write. Punctuation. Not, not, not even sometimes optional, just non-existent. Uh, spelling. Spell check. Grammar. There's a grammar checker in Word. Um, none of this. Uh, they just stay away from it. Um, online identity. We want them to know that like, I am a thing. I'm not my Facebook. I, I am something else, right? I'm not just the little parties I go to and the cool, funny things I find. Um, teach them about publishing online. Take your material, whatever you do, and you can now publish it. My students are communicators. They need to communicate. This is their job, or it will be their job when they uh, work with somebody else. Internet culture. I want them to understand the internet is a sharing culture. When I show them in uh, writing classes, I show them what the basic page format is, um, I tell them, understand, this just formed, right? It's a header, two columns on either side, content in the middle, and a footer. That's pretty much the structure of every single page on the internet. Unless it's a continuous scroll, which is just the content section and the header and the footer. <laughs> Why do we have that? Because that's like the default we all fell to. How did we get there? Somebody started copying somebody else's site. Because that was a cool layout. <laughs> that's how we got it. The internet is a sharing culture, and they need to understand that. And then cultural sensitivity. My students come from all sorts of schools. As I said, big inner city schools. I have students who come from, we have these, I don't know if you do in your state, K-12 schools. Kindergarten through high school in the same building. I have one student, he had 14 people in his senior class. Smart, one of the smartest students I ever had. Uh, but they need to understand that this is a cool thing. Some students of mine have never left the county they were born in until they came to MTSU for a visit. Never left the county. That, that boggles my mind. Um, where do they publish? All of these places. I tell them not to publish at those three on the right. Um, uh, just for various reasons. One, professional, you know, just a professional image. The other, cost, Wix, Squarespace. It's going to cost them money. Um, so they start at WordPress.com. I've seen criticisms about publishing at WordPress.com versus getting your own site. WordPress.com is just simple. They go in, they sign up, off they go. And I tell them, hey, if you want to create your own site, not a problem. Export all the content you created in WordPress.com, import it into your own hosted install, ta-da, and my juniors and seniors do this because they're getting to a spot where they want their own stuff. Uh, we move them to self-hosted WordPress as quickly as we can. Um, and actually, that's really only started this year because I've turned them on to uh, Reclaim, and I'm talking with Reclaim uh, 
right now about uh, actually working a deal out with our college. So everybody will get a website. Um, so how does it, this is how every, stu every student site starts. Home, typically with the blog up front, no home page, and about page and a contact page. Really simple. Contact is usually a form. Um, basically, we're trying to give them a little knowledge. Anybody know what that diagram is on the side? I'm so proud I found it. That's a special theory of relativity. Um, all right, freshman, this is the freshman site structure I told you. This is the senior site structure. So they went from that to that. Pretty much the same stuff. They just fleshed it out. And that's kind of the cool thing. Um, they're slowly doing, you know, slowly building and building, building. Uh, let's see, what works? Whoa, sorry. Sorry, I have like 20 seconds, right? Yes, something like 20 seconds. Um, okay, what works? Giving our students real-world experience. They're publishing. This, this is very daunting to them. I tell them right off the bat, you are publishing, again, to every single individual who has Internet access on their phone, on their computer, on their tablet, in the world. People are, have the ability to look at your sites, right? This creates a foundation for their general online presence. They start in school with basic website, and they build and build and build, and now they have their own online presence. They don't have Facebook's version of their online presence. They have their very own. Um, and for my students, he gives them what I call a two-year head start. They're already building a website. They're already maybe have their own domain. Um, my students um, compete with big schools like UT, um, they compete with Vanderbilt. When they go into the market in Nashville, that's who they compete with. Well, you know, they're coming from a really big state school with, I'm sorry, kind of like all comers. Pay $25, have like more than a 2.0, you're in. Right? So they have to compete with these people from Vandy. That's not easy, right? Because these kids are typically scholarship kids, really smart, or wealthy kids who can get into school. And they need to know that that's who they are. So they need to get ahead. They have to get ahead quickly if they can. Still to come, free hosting. I said this already, a great deal. Um, and I'm looking at creating a short course as a, like a freshman level, a one credit course um, that would just be on website building for everybody, everybody in the college. I'll start with my concentration. Just so that even before they have a class, they built. All right, takeaways for us. We keep our courses organized. Um, it's easy to create new course websites. That's the really big thing. For them, um, they get great online habits, and every assignment they do builds a portfolio. Um, what I like to tell them is the, why you're, you know, they say, why are we putting our assignments online? Because here's, here's where this starts. You need to make that assignment your very best work. It puts the pressure on them. It's not like an assignment. It's like a real thing. It's a project that people are going to look at. You need to make that the very best thing you could. Because it's going to be seen by everybody on Earth. It can be seen by those people. So it has to be your very best work. So it kind of like kicks the pressure up a little bit on that. Um, but that's it. They need to understand that. And they need to understand that over time, they will eventually have the ability to... Uh, Build, just suck those into portfolio. You saw that one with the interview from YouTube. That started on his uh, personal WordPress.com site, and he moved it to his own domain, uh, JamesLGrummet.com, and he incorporated it into his portfolio. I mean, that's that that is like how it's supposed to work, and I'm so happy that it does. That's it. How did I do? Yes. Oh, okay. Just pretty close. Five minutes. <laughs> okay. Any questions? So can I ask, I have uh, just a quick, was this like, where was this in terms of like, um, before you do your evaluations, I just want to know. <laughs> so it was just like, oh yes, uh, that was uh, what I was expecting. Oh, that was really okay. Or no, this is like so basic, any monkey could do it. So it was that. spot on for me. Yeah. Okay, good deal. All right, questions? Yeah. The themes Could you, you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Rick Gaspar, I'm a professor of media at Hillsborough Community College. 
and we've been using WordPress with the students since 2008. Are you using themes that uh, you create, or are you using pre-programmed themes or paid? Themes? I'm just using uh, basic themes. I'm, you know, I I got away from coding at I'm embarrassed to say at CSS one. Same for your students then? Yeah, for, uh, same for my students, unless they happen to be information systems majors. Um, and information systems, it's a minor, I'm sorry, not a major. Well, actually, I have a dual major. Um, but uh, it's a minor. If they've gone through some of their web development classes, those students will get more into it. My content strategy, content management class, uh, they were like, custom themes? How cool. No one executed, but it was like, how cool. So, uh, no, I haven't gone to custom themes. Um, I recommend, I'm using, for my sites, I'm using Academica, if it's on WordPress.com, and it's also a, a it's an open free theme. I think, I forget who makes it. Um, I don't like the version that's open. I like the one that's on .com, but uh, better. But um, I just, I'm just using one thing. When a student, when faculty get the opportunity to create their own site, I only have like 10 themes installed that I think would be most appropriate to a course website. They can install others, but these are people who don't, you know, they wouldn't know a WordPress site if it hit them in the head. So, all right, sorry, I don't mean to, I'm not really now talking to my, my colleagues, they just don't know, they just don't know. Questions, others, there, and then there. Do you find that with the non-traditional students they struggle with learning WordPress, especially as they start moving to building their own site? Non-visual? Non-traditional. Oh, non-traditionals? Yeah. Oh yeah, they're afraid they're going to break it. Yeah. <clears throat> it's going to blow up. They're going to break the computer. They're, they're most afraid they're going to break the computer. They forget WordPress. They're just like, ah! Yeah, no, non-traditional. I don't know. I don't know why. Well, it really depends on non-traditional, right? So non-traditionals, anywhere from like late 20s who you know put college off up to um, uh, 40s and 50s, typically... Um, those people are either people who are retraining out of another career or are uh, women coming back into the workforce and you know saying I want a career and um, those older people are typically afraid they're gonna break it the men less so they're like yeah whatever and the women though are like eh. you know because they came out of a whole world that science bad home economics good so yeah so non-traditionals it really varies um, I have non-traditionals come in. I just had one. She's a transfer. She was 43. She's actually a good friend now. Um, she's been building websites for 10 years. She was, she was building websites in Joomla. Like, well, we're only going to do WordPress. So, anyway, does that answer? Yeah, does the um, one-hour course that you're planning on building sort of help them? the students who are really struggling with WordPress? Is that sort of a way to help them? Yeah, it's going to be that? very hand-holding all the way through because yeah. the, other, the way I handle it right now is um, I have... One or two, I have like a little unit in all of my classes that's either one or two class sessions about here's how to build a WordPress site, here's how to create your user ID, here's how to build a page. So it's very, very simple. And I have uh, typically like two little classes about here's how to do it, then one class um, which is, okay, you're all going to build it in a workshop lab environment and I'm going to walk around and make sure you're doing okay. And that varies by whether they want to, whether they're technically adept, or whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm Debbie. I'm from Delaware, and uh, the you you finally touched on the idea that of your uh, <coughs> LMS system because uh, it looked to me like you were building one. I'm not. No. But it, but it I'm a lot like I do not use my LMS because I hate it. Um, it's Desire to Learn. It has its own internal email system oh. that does not tie to our external email system. So I have to check two mailboxes. Not doing that. Um, the grading is great because I don't have to keep an Excel spreadsheet. It does some really good stuff. I can do other things. I can put rubrics in. Quizzes are great. It has great quiz functionality. Um, I just tell students I use this for grading. Don't put an email in there. I will never see it. Student put an email in there. Hey, how come you didn't answer my email? I put it in there three weeks ago. I put it in where? I put it in Desire to Learn. Oh, well. Oh, well. I never looked there. Um, so I don't like the LMS we have. It's it's not connected, and IT doesn't think it should be, I guess. Um, it just got like a free ride renewal on a contract. I'm like, didn't that seem wrong? They had, <laughs> this is great. So when you buy a big thing, right, you have these presentations. They had three of them over spring break. <laughs> 
for faculty input. Like, really? <laughs> um, yeah. And desire to learn, amazing, and won. <laughs> Crazy. All right, who else? Uh, I think I'm out of here almost. Yeah. I think I'm out. And I'll take one last one, a quick one. All right, I'm around. Um, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.